Hello, and welcome to Poppy Approved Movies. My name is Poppy. And I'm Natalie. In our podcast, we will review and critique my favorite PG-13 movies. Movies that I wasn't allowed to watch until I turned 13. Every week, Natalie and I will watch a new PG-13 movie. And I'll see if Poppy's movies live up to the hype. Which, of course, they will. Today, we're going to be watching Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. Before we begin, there will be spoilers. If you haven't seen the movie and don't want it to be spoiled, press pause and come back when you're finished. Now, Poppy, tell me the deets on this movie. Okay. Scott Pilgrim vs. The World came out in 2010 with a runtime of 1 hour and 52 minutes. It was written by Michael Bacall and Edgar Wright, based on the comic book by Brian Lee O'Malley. I have the series of uh, comic books by Brian Lee O'Malley, and I love them. Try to get your sister to read them. And she read the first one and then gave up and didn't read any more of them. I never read any of them, but we did play the video game for oh. a little while until it corrupted and died. I know, but I re-downloaded it, so hopefully it's it's good. And all four of us played with you and your, your cousin joined us, right? Yeah. It was directed by Edgar Wright. The main stars are Michael Sarah, Mary Elizabeth Winstead, and Kieran Culkin. Fun facts. There are many references to video games throughout the movie, especially Nintendo. The coins, the one-up. Ramona's hair, all the band's names, and the fighting. Edgar Wright called the Zelda theme music the nursery rhyme of this generation. I loved how the coins dropped because that's just how like the video game was. Like Every time you defeated a bad guy, you would go and collect your coins. Yeah, I read, well, I'll get to it later about the coins, but they were, they were real Canadian money. Really? They actually use real coins for some of the scenes. So. They were probably sweeping away afterwards like, okay, we got to get this off. No, we're... I couldn't say you are, because you have a Nintendo. But growing up, I was a big Sega boy, so I don't know if I appreciate all the Nintendo references as much as uh, maybe some other people do. But I like Nintendo as well. And now we have a Nintendo Switch in the house. so And a DS, a 3DS, right? Sophia has a 3DS. Sophia has a 3DS, and we have a Nintendo Switch, and Sophia also has a Nintendo Lite. And then we have a GameCube here as well. We do. We still have it, huh? Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's it. Mommy was a Nintendo child. She was, yes. So what do you think, Nat? Well, I thought it was kind of boring. (laughs) Oh, no! I can't believe you thought it was boring. It was hilarious. I watched it when we watched it again. I thought it was so funny. I don't think it was my kind of humor. No, maybe not. Did you ever hear me laugh during the movie? No, not too many times. Your sister laughed a lot, and then she said she didn't like it either. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what the everything. She laughs at everything, yeah, and then she's like, I don't care. I'm like, you were laughing like a hundred times, and she's like, yes, I give it a half a star. I'm like, Do you hey. remember Mean Girls? She laughed every single time they talked. Yeah, and, she and then she it gave three, it like a <laughs> three and a half stars. You're right. But oh, I am gosh, not I don't even like that. Know. What? It, how many stars did you give it? Three and a half. Uh, no, well, like a C minus, I guess. Still a passing grade. You know, it's funny because we watched Stardust, and I really enjoyed that last last week. And now we're watching this movie, and I thought this movie was just so much better and funnier and so much more entertaining. And you, you barely thought that. So It's only a half star better than Stardust. I know. Yeah, it's still pretty good, though. Mm-hmm. Why don't we get into the recap? We begin in Toronto, where 22-year-old Scott Pilgrim tells his friend that he is dating a high school girl named Knives Chow. I, at this point, I didn't really know that he wasn't in high school, so I was like, okay, why is this big deal did you read the did you read that so like in the beginning when they introduced all the characters their their names ages and like like little information came out about each one no what what do you think this is you think this is english class oh come on it was that was how you figure out that he was 22 at that point you know he's not in high school at 22 i know you're not in high school yeah but you do know 22 year olds aren't in high school i just know that i wasn't reading them and i didn't read the book so i didn't know he was not in high school i'm gonna make you read the book no (laughs) <laughs> so, on our next episode, we'll have six reading book reviews by Natalie. Uh, <laughs> by next week. Just kidding. I might reread them. Some are impressed by the fact that he's dating a high school girl. A little creepy. And some are disgusted. Yeah, creepy. 
Yeah. Knives comes over to watch Scott Pilgrim's band, Sex bob rehearse. The members of the band are Stephen Stills, the talent. I said that on the... He didn't read that either, I guess. Kim and Young Neil. Scott's roommate, Wallace. I think it's funny they call him Young Neil. <laughs> What's funny. the point? <laughs> yeah, I don't know why. Because it's funny. I don't know how old he is. I mean, he's like 18 or something like that. So I, apparently you didn't read the little thingies either. I wasn't paying attention to how old he was because he was young. So he was young. Yeah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Scott's, uh, Scott's Looking roommate. Looking a little sus. Well, you should. The main character. You don't think maybe you would have read the main characters? You would think that would be the number one person. You well, want whatever. Let's move on. Let's move on. Three point five stars. Scott's roommate Wallace hears about him dating a high schooler and tells his sister Stacy. They both disappear. Oh my God! It's Becca. It's Becca from, from our uh, Pitch Perfect episode, episode two. Is that it? Is it number two? Yeah. 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 They both disapprove of him dating a 17-year-old, but Scott doesn't care, and he leaves with knives. Scott, n- weird. Please stop. Pick on someone your own age. Let's move on. I imagine that'll be something you show up at the end of our podcast. <laughs> Scott and Knives go to an arcade and play a DDR-style fighting game. They're really good at it. They work together. In the movie, was it DDR, or was it like a different... That wasn't game. DDR because DDR is just the music, not like a fighting game. So, uh, but it, it was like a fighting game that they were fighting ninjas and stuff. It was crazy how good they were, though. <laughs> they were like in sync, like jumping over each other and stuff like that. I right? wonder how many times they had to do that before, like the actors. Oh, the actors themselves? Yeah, yeah. that would have been so funny. <laughs> they go shopping and they end up at a record store. That's where people buy music. What Natalie. is what is a record, father? Yeah, it's where uh, music is. Uh, bought and purchased and then you can take it home and listen to it when was that around like 20 bc 2010 right there so oh. thank you very much and there are still record stores thank you they're called vintage stores now daddy they're called historical they're called like uh, DJs and stuff like that she shows him a cd of the band clash at demon head he throws it away we find out later that envy the lead singer of that band broke his heart that was his ex-girlfriend we don't really get much about her, honestly, though. Because, like, did she cheat on him? Or uh, she did does. she just break They explain him? it later. Oh, okay. Yeah. I wasn't paying attention. I got bored. Oh, my goodness. I'm going to have to. So the recap isn't for the audience. It's for Natalie. Hey, oh. hey, hey, hey. That night, Scott dreams of a girl in skates and falls in love. Right immediately. Later, he sees her at the library. And then later again, sees her at a party. This guy's a prophet or something. I know. He does. His dreams come true. He asks around about the girl, and we learn her name is Ramona Flowers. She delivers for Amazon and is from New York. Do you think this was another product placement? Had to be, right? Like she, uh, Amazon. Like the McDonald's on Fifth Element? <laughs> Maybe. And then did you notice that it wasn't Amazon.com? It was just Amazon? No, Amazon.ca, which I think is the Canadian version of the Amazon website. Because so uh. he asked Wallace, what's the website address for it? Amazon.ca. And he's like, Amazon.ca. <laughs> Anyways, he tries to talk to her, but it is totally awkward. He like mm-hmm. goes and try to see if he can uh, like you know, kind of have her go out with him or date him. Even though he's literally dating someone else. Let's keep moving. Scott goes home and orders a package from Why Amazon. Why is he the hero of this story? I think we realize at the end that he realizes. No spoilers. Let's get to the end when we get to the this end. This whole thing is spoiled, Father. Yes, let's get to the end. Let's go in order. Scott goes home and orders a package from Amazon to see Ramon again. Amazon.ca. Amazon.ca. And then he sits right in front of the door waiting for the package to come. Sex bob will compete in the Battle of the Bands for a record deal. They will play against Crash and the Boys. It's just some band. That night, Scott dreams of Ramona. And when he wakes up, the doorbell is ringing, and it's her. He makes his move again. She agrees to go out with him. Feel finally signed for the package. I would have just dropped the package and ran, honestly, at that point. No, I think, so maybe at that time, you needed to sign the package for you to be able to drop it off. What's the point of signing a package, though? To make sure that it gets delivered, as opposed to leaving it on the door and someone might steal it. Oh, yeah, that's true. Anyways, he grabs the package and throws it behind him into the garbage can, because he didn't really care what he bought. With the what package. I really want to know is what he bought. Like, what was his throwaway item that he was paid for? I was reading uh, some of the, like, you know, like the Easter eggs and things like that. He actually threw it. And it actually went into the garbage, but it took like 33 takes for him to actually make it happen. (laughs) 
Like the movie has tons of special effects, but they wanted this one to not be a special effect. So. It's kind of random, but sure. But it's a it's a funny scene because he just throws it like as soon as he gets it. Yeah. He didn't care about it. He just wants to date Ramona Flowers while he's dating. So. Keep going. That night they go on a date and it goes well, even though it's super awkward. He's very awkward throughout the whole movie. He's an awkward guy. She invites him to her house for tea and they make out and they go to sleep together. Inappropriate. They just met, bro. I know. That's what your mom's like. They just met. What's going on here? And and he was just, she was like not even interested. It, he was so was, weird. It's not like he was impressive at all, right? He was, yeah. He was just an awkward, crazy dude. Yeah. It's just the weirdest kind of things he would say. At the Battle of the Bands later, Scott sees Ramona and says hello. Right then, Knives comes in and kisses him. He seemingly has completely forgotten all about Knives. At, later in the movie, it's like a big thing that he's like, guys, I cheated on you. But like, at this point, Ramona would have known if he had cheated. Because he just saw a teenage girl just run up and kiss him and be like, oh my god, babe. It's true. She didn't really have like a negative reaction to it. Yeah, she was just like, okay, I guess I guess they're cousins. <laughs> like, <laughs> what, what is that going on there? And she's like... What is that? What is that? That like she has no brain power in that moment. It's true. She kind of just kind of goes. Well, maybe she didn't think they were like boyfriend girlfriend. Maybe they were just they had just gone out that one night. I don't know to be honest. But it is kind of weird that she doesn't have a negative reaction as opposed to like, "Hi, who's your friend?" And then later on, she's shocked that he cheated on her. Yeah, that's true. Which you're getting to the end again. You like getting to the end right here. Trying to trying to go in harder here, child. Take your Sorry, time. I'm really stuck on this this moment here. All right, at the Battle of the Band, Sex Bomb, rock out and win, and they go to the finals of the Battle of the Band. Then a guy named Matthew Patel flies in and challenges Scott to a fight. They have an epic battle. Patel even does Bollywood dance moves and throws fireballs at him. Scott eventually defeats him, and Patel explodes into coins. <laughs> I made the sound effect, Natalie. Did you like it? <laughs> we've made it, Natalie. We've made it. We've made it. We can retire now. Co- accomplished podcasters. No? No. Okay. Got a whole list over here. That's true. Scott and Ramona leave together, and she explains the dealio. There's an organization made up of people Ramona has dated called the League of Seven Evil Exes. Scott has to fight and defeat them all to be with her. Patel was just the first ex. The next day, Wallace reminds Scott to break up with Chow, which he eventually does. Eh, Natalie, are you happy now? Mm. Yes. Did he happy. need? No. Did he need to break? He could have broken up with her in the first place. Yeah. No, I mean, he should have, obviously. Or not try to date Ramona when he was dating Knives. And he acts like a little baby over here. Because, what's his name? Wallace? What is it? Wallace is the roommate? Yeah. Wallace is like, you need to break up with Knives. And then... He's like, oh, that's hard. <laughs> I'm going to do it. It's hard. Yeah. <laughs> like a baby. That's true. She's crushed, by the way. And Scott doesn't care. He's super happy that he broke up with her. Members of the band are looking at him like, wow, you just broke this girl's heart and you have like no feelings. He's like, no, I'm happy. I have Ramona now. Mm-hmm. Later that night, Scott and Ramona go to an action movie set where a huge star named Lucas Lee is being filmed for a movie. We find out Lucas is Ramona's ex number two. And he and Scott fight. Scott is getting smashed. Like, he's just getting really beat up. And finally tricks Lucas to try a death-defying skating trick. Lucas agrees and crashes so hard that he explodes. Two down, five more to go. This is when I realized that Ramona is useless. Because she just leaves. She straight up leaves him. Yeah, she goes. While he's fighting over her, she's just like, okay, I'm, uh, I have dinner and she's like, she just leaves. And then you think, there's been two battles, he's getting totally smashed, and she's supposed to be like the super strong, crazy, ultra amazing woman. And she's just standing there the whole time watching them. That's true. That's true. She kind of just like allows it and then when doesn't help. Like him. she doesn't help at all. And like again, like I said earlier, she couldn't even realize that knives and him were dating after they literally kissed. And she, like, jumped onto him. She's dumb, and she's, like, not helping at all. She's just like, all right, I guess, fight for me, bro. He has to prove his love and destroy these seven exes. Well, to, to like we did love. in our Stardust episode, <laughs> you love is unconditional. You shouldn't have to prove love. Okay. 
I see what you mean. The next day, Scott is walking when he's attacked by a shadow girl. They call it truth for now. Later, Stephen still tells Scott that Envy asked Sex bob to open for her band. They agree, and Ramona comes to the show. Knives goes as well. Both bands rock out, and we find out Envy is dating her band's bassist, Todd Ingram, who also happens to be Ramona's ex number three. So that's what happened. She went away, Envy did, when she started dating Todd, the bass player, which is the Ramona's evil evil ex, and the same instrument that Scott Pilgrim plays. He plays the bass as well, so she betrayed one bassist for another. So messed up. Messed up. And he's messed up. She has a type. She's a type. He, uh, and he might have a type too. Backstage, it is very awkward until Knives geeks out on Envy. Envy directs Todd to punch Knives. In this scene right here, she has highlights. She had done highlights for to kind of impress Scott. She just tried to become Ramona, who, if you ask me, is not a very good person to try to become. And Todd punches the highlights out of her hair. Did you <laughs> like that part? That was funny. That was kind of funny. It was kind of funny. Kind of horrible, too. But yeah. Yeah, it was messed up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's messed up, right? Because she was just being happy and nice, and that dude just punched her face off. Yeah. That's totally mean. Scott gets angry, stands up for knives, and faces Todd, and the fight is on. Sadly, Todd has vegan powers and is demolishing Scott. Eventually, Scott tricks Todd into drinking coffee with half and half. Todd loses his vegan powers. And Scott headbutts Todd so hard that he explodes into coins. Three down, four to go. Scott and Ramona go to an after party, and we see the shadow girl. Her name is Roxy. She's Ramona's ex number four. Roxy and Ramona fight, but Roxy wants to fight Scott. Scott doesn't want to fight a girl. That's what he said. I don't want to fight a girl. So... And at least Ramona was a little less useless this time. Because she protected him, right? Yeah. Ramona uses Scott like a puppet and like kind of like controls his hand to fight her. I don't know why she didn't just fight her. No, Roxy wanted, they, she said that if Scott isn't the one defeating me, then it doesn't count. Well, that doesn't matter if she's coins on the floor. She won't be coins on the floor if Ramona hits him. Oh, I guess. Anyway, so uses him like a puppet and together they defeat Roxy. They use her weakness and she explodes into coins. <laughs> Scott and Ramona argue after the battle, and she leaves. Again, right? This is the second time she just kind of bounced on him. Because she's useless. At the Battle of the Bands, <laughs> Ramona comes to the show like some nerdy guy. Sex bob takes on the Karayanagi twins, who are DJ musicians. And they also happen to be Ramona's exes number five and number six. She dated twins? She dated twins. That's messed up. They have an awesome battle where their music waves take on animal forms. The twins' music become dragons, and Sex bob music becomes a gorilla. The gorilla eventually destroys the dragons, and the Katayanagi stage explodes. Six down, one more to go. Sex bob wins the Battle of the Bands, and Gideon, a music executive and Ramona's final ex, gives them a record deal. That was the nerdy guy that she was with earlier. Mm-hmm. Scott doesn't sign the deal, but then young Neil takes his place. Ramona goes back to Gideon, saying she cannot help herself. Scott is down. No girlfriend, no band, and even Wallace is kicking him out of his apartment. Scott gets invited to the Sex bob concert, and he decides to go and fight for Ramona. We see the Sex bob and they're all dressed in, like, suits now. They sold out, right? Yeah. Yeah, they were all playing, like, soft music now, so that's kind of funny. He beats up Gideon's henchmen. He faces off with Gideon when Knives comes in angry about the breakup. She attacks Ramona... And there are two fights going on at once. Gideon eventually gets the upper hand and kills Scott. He just died. <laughs> Scott is in a dream world, but he finds an extra life or a one-up. He uses it and goes back to the theater and uses his second chance to make amends to both Ramona and Knives for cheating on them. So he apologized to them. You see? He came around. He apologized. He made amends. Ramona's like, what? Yeah. You cheated on me? Girl, he was kissing another girl in front of you. This time, with the help of Ramona and Knives, Scott defeats Gideon. Coins everywhere. I like how afterwards the band immediately was like picking up the coins. Yeah. So that scene was all real coins. 
I think like one of the stage crew or something like that, they picked up like twenty five dollars in coins or something like that. Really? Yeah, there were like coins everywhere. They were using real uh, uh, Canadian coins. So. Afterwards, they're like, "Yo, we can go to Starbucks now." I know for real. Ramona takes off, saying that she is leaving town. And Scott and Knives talk, but Knives tells him to go after her. That it wouldn't work out for the two of them because Knives says that she's too good for him. And I think we can all agree to that. Scott catches up to Ramona and joins her. And they leave together. The end. Let me ask you one quick question. With Scott, there was an extra scene that I didn't want to talk about. But I want to now because of what the things you were saying. Scott was not a hero in this movie, right? He was the hero of the movie. He He was the protagonist, but he wasn't a hero. At the end of the fight he actually fights his evil version of himself right Uh and so we didn't talk about that after he kills Gideon he fights the evil version of himself but they don't actually fight they walk out together and they like make friends with each other and they're gonna like get grab coffee next week or something like that right yeah to me that was the saddest moment because he was a jerk throughout the whole movie right yeah he was inconsiderate he didn't care he was selfish he was just a rude guy and then at the end he gets the chance to fight his evil self. And find remorse and make amends and become a better person. And he... Doesn't care and he just makes friends and brunch plans. Yeah, so he becomes a yeah, brunch. That's right, they went, they're going to go to brunch. So it's funny that you think he kind of tries to redeem himself by apologizing to people. He even apologized to Sex Bomb, Like saying, all right, guys, it was my fault. I was thinking too much myself. Apologizes to Knives. Apologizes to Ramona. And he ends up with Ramona, right? But then that one scene, I the fact that he didn't end up... It was funny because they walk out together. It's like a funny scene. Uh-huh. But there's no redemption. He doesn't actually feel like bad about these things. Yeah. He was just always kind of the jerk and he'll always be that jerk. So It's sad. Yeah. I don't know. Still funny, though. Know? When he came out with his evil self and they were just chilling out. Like they were about to kill each other. But he's like, no, I'm not going to kill the evil self. I just... I'm going to be friends with him and then be part of that, so... All right, could this movie still be made today? Um, well, the parts that were bad was Kim was kind of a mean character, and she called Scott retarded, or the R word. Mm, yeah, there was one time where they did that. Anything else? Um, f- for Scott, the whole scene where he was like, I won't fight a girl, and he said, I can't hit a girl because they're soft. That's what he said? <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. That's right. Kind of like stereotyping women. That's true. Yeah. Gideon, I think he was like the nerdy guy controlling Ramona, right? Yeah. He told Knives, listen, Kung Pao Chicken. Oh, as that's like right. a really racist. A very racist term. Do you remember in the earlier scene when Scott described that he's dating a high school girl, he said, and she's Chinese, and people were like, oh. It was like a, a racist thing. Kind of like, oh, you're dating a Chinese girl. The way that Gideon also... Has a chip implanted into Ramona. That's right. We didn't bring It's that another, up. like, slavery issue, kind of. That's true. You're right. Yeah. I didn't even remember that part. I do remember it, but I'm saying I didn't I didn't think of it that way. And then also Ramona, when he's she's fighting her, was it third evil ex, which uh-huh. was the woman? She was like, it was just a phase. And then it was like it kind of said like, oh, being gay is like not actually who you are. It's just mm, a I phase. I didn't pick up on that. And Roxy got really upset about that, right? Like yeah. she got really angry over there. Yeah. That's a good point. Because it's kind of saying like, oh, that's not actually how people are. It's just like a phase in like teenage hood or whatever when you're like just experimenting, which is not true. People are actually gay and that's just who they are. Right. Did anything else about uh, not that I can remember right now. Oh, maybe just the point that Ramona was a weak character in my eyes and she was supposed to be this cool, awesome person. Yeah, like she was cool, right? She was supposed to be the cool one. There was also a scene, to me, once again, anytime you talk about underage people or dating older people, I don't find it as a laugh or funny. Oh, yeah, of course. I forgot about that completely. The whole... She's dating a high schooler. Yeah. And she's not 18, right? Yeah, So she's it's like actually kind of illegal. Yeah, exactly. And they, they play it for a joke, right? The, that, oh, I'm dating a high school girl. And, they're, and they're, a lot of people judge them for it. But then some people think it's like, cool, you know, you're dating a high school. And especially when they find out later, oh, and she goes to Catholic school. So it's like the whole Catholic school girl 
kind of idea that people like for little kids. I don't know. Anyways, so. It's very creepy. It's, it's creepy, very yes. wrong. <laughs> very creepy. All right. Does it pass the Bechdel test? Uh, it does, but like just barely. Just a, only one scene passes. Let's go ahead and talk about the Bechdel test. It's, uh, it's a little quick test to check about female representation in movies, TV shows, anything that's going on. There's three criteria. The first criteria is, are there two named women in the movie? Yes, there's Kim, there's Knives, there's um, Ramona, there's also Stacy, that was her um, Sister. sister's mm-hmm. name, and then there was the the April Ludgate. April Ludgate's character, who all she did was just yell at him, right? Yeah, I thought it was kind of funny because she was like playing a similar character in both Parks, Parks and, and Rec, Rec and in this movie, just that like grumpy teenage. And I, I just yelling at people. She said all the curse words, uh-huh. but they had like dolphin noises. Yeah, like sound effects that covered her mouth and and her and covered the sound so that way it wouldn't get an R-rated movie or something like that. Yeah, but anyways, there was there was all of envy too. Of envy, was envy in yeah. yeah. So there was a lot of women. A lot, lot of female, uh, a lot of named uh, women in the movie. How about, do they talk to each other? Not really. Well, like, Knives and Ramona talk to each other, but it's like only insults. And then Kim briefly talks to Knives really quickly at the beginning when they're introducing herself. And Scott is like, this is Kim. And then she's like, oh, hi, what's your name? And she's like, I'm Kim. Yeah, like, don't talk to me kind of thing. Yeah. All right. And the third one is when two of the females talk to each other or two of the women talk to each other, they talk about something other than a man. Only in the scene that I just mentioned with Kim and Knives. No other scene, though. I think there's one more that I remember. When Knives went backstage and met Envy, she was kind of like saying, I really love your music or something like that. Remember, she was geeking out. Yeah. So she was kind of talking to her. But the other girl wasn't talking to her. No. And then she sends... Her boyfriend to punch her right. She in never the face. really direct. Envy never really directly talks back to her though. She just no. is like knives is talking to her at her, and then she's like, "Go punch her in the face." Like yeah. they never really talk. Have a it kind of gives gives her boyfriend the look. All right, anything else? No. All right. Thank you for tuning in to Poppy Approved Movies. If you like this episode, make sure to subscribe, rate, and review on your favorite podcast app. We put out an episode every Friday. If you want to suggest a movie for us to watch and critique. Email us at poppyapprovedmovies at gmail.com. That's poppyapprovedmovies at gmail.com. No spaces, no caps. We'll try our best to get to your suggestions. And remember, it has to be PG-13. Next time, we're watching Forrest Gump, so I hope you join us. I'm Boppy. I'm Natalie. See you next time. Bye!